God, I pray that we're funny as fuck during this episode. <laughs> May your swift hand give us some fucking funny ass shit to talk about and may you bless us with uh an open heart and a quick wit amen all right ready yeah what's up everybody welcome back to son of a boy dad podcast today is september 27th what is what is up everybody welcome back to son of a boy dad podcast today is september 27th why should we give a fuck about that it's just ritual you gotta (laughs) say the date (laughs) Today is September 27th. It is Monday. It's approximately 3.40, 3.56 so p.m. It's a little bit in the afternoon, you know. We've afternoon had a little delight. bit to eat, but, uh, you know, it, we've had some, some conversations today, but that doesn't mean that we're not fucking ready to give a, a piping hot son of a boy dad. It's going to be a piping hot episode. Sit tight, strap in, and just get ready to laugh. We have a lot of shit to talk <laughs> about. Owen, tell them what they're going to hear about today. Um, Owen, hit him with the recap <laughs> segment. <laughs> Give us a rundown, Owen. Sass Crush Day stand up set in front of a sold out crowd. Okay. Sold out shows. <laughs> Missed a train home to see his mommy. Oh, I did. I forgot about that. Oh fuck! That was actually super frustrating, but it's not—it's not a fun story. Watched a bunch of movies in bed. True, I watched four movies on Saturday. Jesus Christ, bro! I thought that you'd be happy after doing well at I stand was. up. I was very. It was a very fun day. That's how you deal with uh, your your joy by just staying in bed all day. After I feel satisfied with the week, yeah. Really? Yeah. You have no wanderlust, bro. When you're get grinding all world? week, laying in the bed on a Saturday feels a lot better than you think. <laughs> <laughs> you don't get rest days like that often. Unless you've been grinding. No, you got to you gotta soak them up. Your body tells you. Your body chemistry will just tell you. It's time to zonk out. Time to sit back on the couch. Time to watch some Black Hawk Down or whatever yeah. the fuck you watched. I actually watched... Uh, you, you ever seen, like, Split? Yeah. You ever seen the other, like, the whole trilogy? No, I haven't watched the entire trilogy. Unbreakable and Glass? Oh, I have watched Unbreakable. Yeah. Unbreakable is the OG. Yeah, Unbreakable is... So I watched... I'd, I'd Philly, seen, brother! I, it takes yeah. place in Philly! <laughs> it's true. It's what do true. you know about that? Uh, They're so walking yeah. around the football field. Yeah, so I watched um, I watched Unbreakable first. I'd already seen Split, and then I watched uh, Glass. And pa- everyone Glass gets bad ratings. People don't like it. I loved it. What'd you like about it? It's awesome that there was finally a guy that was weaker than you on screen. No, it was great. It was great. It like all you related out. to the main character. I felt very satisfied with the ending. What? Uh, how does it end? I'm never gonna watch it in my life. So basically, they all they bring in Mr. Glass. Uh, the split dude, the beast, uh-huh. and they bring in the unbreakable dude. Holy shit. And they bring them all, they're all in a prison. And they're like telling them that they don't actually have superpowers, blah, 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 all this stuff. And then it's like, so basically they're trying to convince them. And Mr. Glass is like the brains of the operation. And Sounds he, like my third grade teacher when they said I wouldn't amount to shit. I know. Which exactly. I eventually put in several rap songs. Yeah, exactly. And uh, yeah, basically like... They're in prison. They're in these like high, like these high tech cells. Like they can't get out. It has all of their like triggers in it. So if they misbehave, they like can't get out. And uh, like they, the Mister Glass guy plans an escape, and he wants to prove to everyone that they actually have superpowers, just like in the comic books. So they go to, they're gonna go to like the most public place they can find, and they're going to um, the standard hotel. No, it's like this new, like this new. <laughs> They're gonna fuck in the windows of <laughs> the yeah. standard, and it's gonna it's gonna be like a showdown between the unbreakable dude and Mr. Beast, or not Mr. Beast, <laughs> the Beast. <laughs> and it's gonna uh, be Mr. Glass against a YouTuber. Yeah, <laughs> it's pretty hard. It's not really that easy to explain, but it, it works out really well. Is this a Shyamalan? I don't know. Is it? I think it is a Shyamalan. I think the original I'll look it one. Up. Uh, didn't you say Bruce Willis's superpower was that he could bench three fifty? No, so <laughs> it is actually kind of weird. In the first one, they're like, in the first one, he so he gets in the cra- he gets in the train axe, the train cra- the train derails. Right. No one survives except for him. And he was a bitch before this. Like he's like, I can't, I can barely lift the bar. Yeah. So he and they like, he's benching to like test his strength, and his son is like putting the weights on, and he's like, how much was that? And he's like, oh, it was two twenty five, and he was like, that's too heavy. Take the weight off. And then he does, like, two more reps, and he's like, how much was that? And he's like, Dad, I lied. I put more weight on. <laughs> and then they, like, keep going, and he hits, like, th- and, like, he does, like, 350 eventually, and his son's like, how much was that, Dad? And he's like, 
that was 350 pounds. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like... Which is something people can do. Yeah. Like people at my gym bench. Through, like, it's obviously an insane amount of weight, but like... But like people who are on no steroids. And yeah, I knew uh, a kid that was in co- I was in college with who benched like 315. Oh my God. <laughs> that was 350 fucking pounds. How much was that, Papa? Yeah. <laughs> How much weight was that? Yeah. It's, I mean, it is an, it's, it is a lot of weight. And especially to go from like pussy to that. Yeah. But at the same time, I mean, so basically the that's end, like what Spider Man did. At dude. the end, they like all die, and the lady comes up to Mister Glass right before because he is the mastermind behind everything, and she's like, "You guys do have superpowers." She's like, "We convinced you guys that you didn't because we think things have, we think things are good the way they are right now. We don't want more people realizing that they also have superpowers." So it's like a government, like a government operation Yo. to like convince them. But then, what, the what they don't know is that Mr. Glass, he's so smart, he knew they were all going to get caught and get killed. So he had the whole thing on recording, and it was live, being live-streamed the entire time. And then the clips get out, and everyone knows when they're already dead. It's so sick. It was a great ending. That's Shut textbook up. Shyamalan. Yeah, that had to be a Shyamalan. Yeah, because it it's, all based, it it's all based on the comics. So like he, he, Mr. Glass's theory is that the comics are written as like... Um, more like fantasized versions of like reality so like everything is based on like old history everything's based on history so like these people that have super strength they make them like into like superman and stuff and it's like they can't fly but like the original spot the original superman couldn't fly either he was just a normal dude who was strong as fuck holy fuck that yeah. fucking blows your mind and no it's really good you gotta watch it it's good do you fuck with superhero movies as a rule oh yeah 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 i love them why well, I mean, Batman's like uh, the Dark Knight, and Dark Knight Rises are like two of the best movies ever. But Batman is a different uh, like flavor of superhero. He um, doesn't have superpowers. He's the just... Avengers are good as fuck. You like to think that maybe you could have that someday. Of course. <laughs> no, I love the Avengers movies too. <laughs> that if you just put enough time in the gym, sometime you might just be able to fly and I become might be able invisible. Fifty. <laughs> <laughs> if that's all it takes to be a superhero, it's fucking. Yeah. It's pretty sweet. That's just what NFL football is. What did you eat in bed all day? Were you ordering food and just uh, getting just crumbing up your bed? Yeah, I think so. I got Shake Shack at one point. Gross. I know. It was gross. Nothing makes me feel more sluggish in the middle of the day than having Shake Shack. Well, I had it for dinner. So did you just fall asleep right afterwards? No. I mean, yeah, I, I don't I mind I doing it. fired up f- another movie. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bro, you love a flick. What movies did I watch? I That's watched, how you fucking treat yourself, huh? I watched Unbreakable, Glass, And the Sisterhood Taken. of the Traveling Pants. I watched Taken and I watched Flight with Denzel. Shut up! Not a great movie. Which one uh, is that? Is that, wait he he lands a plane upside down. In that. Yeah, not a great movie. Well, that's the good part. What's not great about that? That has the one of the most exciting sequences of any film of all time. Yeah, I don't know. It's it, it's a good scene, but then after that, it's just like he's just like a drug addict. So oh, that makes it way more sweet. <laughs> um, <laughs> that makes it fire. I actually did see something interesting yesterday. I saw that United in like 2029 is coming out with this plane called like the United Boom. And it, it, it's going to be like a super jet that sits like 50 people. And it's going to be like, you're going to be able to get from like Newark to London in like three hours. Mad people are going to die from that shit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and also it's fi- I think it's I looked up as like $5,000 a seat. 50 people? Yeah. Why not just make it bigger? Because it's a jet. I don't think they can go bigger. They can go faster. Like They have to go... Big things can't go as fast as small things, brother. Holy shit, bro. Yeah. That's that physics think shit. think about that? That is some fucking crazy-ass physics shit. Yeah. Well, I mean, I think that we are... We're seriously overdue for all transportation to be ramping up. Oh, yeah, big time. We need shit to be going faster. We need, we need the super... We need those super trains. Super trains we definitely that need. That go from, like, L.A. to... To Boston in, like, an hour. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's really super. Yeah, but there, there's all these like blueprints for it. But it's not. L- I think it's like it's like an hour a knuckle or something like that, and it's like two knuckles to Chicago. It's like not. It's it's like still like if you could get to Chicago from to L A in like an hour, maybe even two hours on a train, that would be awesome. And Matt, like when I was in Hawaii, they were like we didn't. No one could even fly to Hawaii in the 1950s. Like you had to take a fucking ship to Hawaii or something like that. Yeah. The fact that those were the the steps that that were they were making back then, and I feel like nobody's made like we a massive really made jump. We haven't made any progress. Now. We need a we need to have a fucking. They've got jump. like the bullet trains in like Japan, but mm-hmm. yeah, but barely. Yeah, like are, we need some. Those, shit. I don't think Aren't you Japan taking a helicopter tonight? 
I am going to take a helicopter, but that's not like helicopters are as fast as helicopters have have been. It's not like helicopters are getting faster. But I mean, still I, exciting. It, I am excited. I've been on a helicopter twice in my life. One time over Dubai, it was fucking awesome, absolutely beautiful. God damn. And then the other time uh, was at a Clemson game, and the guy was like a uh, retired uh, like Navy pilot or some shit like that, and he was just dropping the helicopter out of the sky to fuck with us. There were like cameras on our faces, and he would just like pull a lever, and we just like fucking drop like fucking an elevator. <laughs> Jesus And it Christ. was terrible. <laughs> I told him not to put out the footage because I was so scared. Yeah. And you could like see it on my face how fucking terrified Can you get I was. Can you the footage if you tried? I, I mean, there's someone here who filmed it, and who I was just like, Nah, we're not actually going to put that out. That would be awesome. I look like as big of a pussy as I feel like. <laughs> I would love to see this. <laughs> it was fucking terrifying. It, I mean, he terrifying. dropped the fucking uh, helicopter out of the air over a lake. And he was just like, ha ha, wait till you see this one, boys. And fucking That's just crazy. yanked it. He probably, he probably lost his license after that. No, he's like, that was what he was like supposed to be doing. Yeah. Like he was supposed to be like fucking with us. He was like trying to give us, they, a- they asked us if we wanted to jump out of the plane. I'm, no, I don't want to do that. Yeah. We saw the Navy SEALs, the former Navy guys that we were going to jump with, and the guy looked like the big Lebowski. He was in a chair, like, fucking sleeping. I was <laughs> like, I'm not <laughs> jumping with that guy. He's 70 years old. Yeah. But they said that he was, like, the most badass guy to ever jump. He would, like, jump into, like, these – he would land on, like, a five-foot-by-five-foot thing in, like, South America and, like, kill a fucking Venezuelan drug lord or some shit like Fuck that. Yeah. They said the dudes were super badass, but – Nah, no, not for me. No, jumping out of planes is not something I would ever want to do. Yeah, at all. No. What What even possesses people to be like? Yeah, I wonder if I could fucking do that. Like flying is a necessity. I want to get from point A to point B. Yeah. Like I'm not just trying to like scare my body into thinking that it's over just so I can fucking feel something. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think I would enjoy even like the dropping part. I would think I would only enjoy like at all a landing. And I don't like roller coasters, no. dude. I don't like going over a hill too no, fast in yeah. a car. <laughs> It makes my penis feel weird. Yeah, it makes mine feel weird, too. I don't like, uh, yeah, I, I don't like any of that. <laughs> it makes your penis feel weird, too? Yeah. It does, dude. I remember saying that when I was, like, six years old. Like, my, I was being driven home with, like, uh, my older sister and one of my older sister's friends. And, like, I don't even know if I realized they didn't have penises. But I was like, wow, that, that just made my penis feel weird. <laughs> <laughs> Going over a bump, and they just, like, looked at each other uncomfortably. Yeah. I was like, w- what? It did. Yeah. Like, before you hear about your stomach dropping, your penis feels weird. And I think it's your balls, right? I yeah. think yeah. it's your balls. Something happening in your balls. Mm-hmm. I mean, it kind of feels like you're, like, uh, it feels like you have to, like, pee almost. Yeah. But you don't. And is it is it like a rush? Is it like adrenaline? Is it like testosterone? Like, what is rushing through your balls that I fucking no makes idea. you feel? But your balls feel weird. Like, your genital area feels weird when you're going over a hump. Yeah. Or, like, even watching. I was watching a video of someone throwing an airplane out their window, like a paper airplane, in New York. And, like, my penis felt weird. <laughs> <laughs> I don't get that, but. Or, or, like, the same thing. Or, like, you you. When you're watching a Russian like uh, teenager hang from a fucking like a uh, real high building or like oh, walking yeah, along yeah, scaffolding, yeah. like you're that makes fucking my hands, my sweat. palms, sweat. your palms yeah. sweat. Yeah, I saw that paper airplane too. It was just a couple folds, right? Yeah, it was barely any folds. It was just whipping around. Just of, uh, I mean, yeah, those videos of people like doing parkour and stuff on top of skyscrapers piss me off. Because <laughs> it's like, what if they fall and then they die and then like everyone else has to watch them fall from like a thousand feet? Well, they did. There was one on Twitter like a year or two ago, and it was just a tweet from the top of like a skyscraper, but he died. Yeah. It's Motherfuckers die. It's going to be Chef Donnie one day. Still out there. <laughs> or how about that uh, that man on wire guy? Yeah, the fucking, yeah. Uh, the French guy who, that, who like tries to romanticize the fact that he's just like a public nuisance and almost gave people 9-11 before 9-11. <laughs> he, like, he like gathered a crowd. He was like, a gathering a crowd before 9-11 yeah. and be like, watch what I'm about to do. Yeah. <laughs> well, check did he, this did out. he die? No, he was fine. There's but a documentary about him, right? Yeah, I think it's called Man on Wire. Is I think it? there's a couple of documentaries. It's a very good movie, but at the same there's time... There's one like, documentary that's like supposed to be like one of the best documentaries ever. Yes, that's the one. Yeah. I felt so free. It was incredible. I've never watched like, it. Like, bro, you're a Doesn't dickhead. his son do like the same thing, too? Yeah, his son just wants he's to be fulfilling, accepted. He's fulfilling the prophecy. No, his dad probably like you. You're a pussy. Yeah, <laughs> you don't fucking get <laughs> high. I was on the fucking twin towers. Yeah, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Yeah, that shit is terrifying, and um, I don't understand what kind of lizard brain people like that have. That's like, I need to feel something. Yeah, I have no idea. Just try stand up for fucking. I know. Uh, yeah, exactly. 
That's what that's what non funny people do. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't have jokes, you'd be fucking dangling off I of know. the fucking Patronus Towers. Fucking very uh, true. How did uh, how did your stand up go? Oh, it was good. Um, it looked awesome. Yeah, it was a good time. It's on the YouTube right now. People can go watch it. What played into your decision to uh, put it out right away? Because I feel like that's like a very generous thing to do for your fans. But yeah. it also like if you worked on any of that material, like do you plan on using any of that again, or is that just all like? Uh, no, I think I'm gonna scratch scratch it all. Why are you gonna start scratch from, it? Start from new. Because I mean, I've been doing those jokes since I started, so it's like. Yeah, but that was last week. <laughs> <laughs> I've been doing them for a few months, and it's like they get boring. A yeah, few but of them were pretty topical too. Yeah, but they're not boring for fucking everybody. Like, yeah, I'll probably keep doing them at open mics and stuff. Yeah, but now they now everybody has seen them. Ah, I don't really give a fuck. Yeah, you just don't care. People hear the jokes again. Bro, I'm a content. I'm a content guy. You're a content machine. All I think is views. <laughs> How can I get some fucking views on this shit? And it did get a lot of views. Did really well. And that's why we're going to switch to talking about politics more often. Yeah, we just exactly. want to fire people up on one side or yeah, another. Yeah. Fire up the women. Women are indoctrinated to fucking to love politics. That's fucking of facts. Everybody knows that about the females. We need to start talking about true crime more <laughs> to win over the women. Do women like I, I was in? I was on a little true crime uh, kick last night before bed. I had the Sunday scaries, and for whatever reason, sometimes watching like videos of people like confessing to murders makes me feel better about my Sunday scaries. Because you're like, oh, I don't feel as alone anymore. <laughs> you killed someone. Celebs yesterday? are just like us. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> they're not that much different from you and me. Yeah, I actually lo- I, I watch a lot of true crime. I don't listen to any true, tri- true crime podcasts though. I want to hear it from the horse's mouth. I don't like anybody uh, like telling the story or reenacting it. I want to hear like the psychopathic grandmother talking about fucking murdering her son-in-law yeah. or some shit like that. The thing that's that was, what's interesting. The thing that's weird to me is like at a certain point, it's like we're all just like e- people are just exploiting these people getting like brutally murdered. So it's like the Gabby Petito thing happened, right? Right. Like the top like 10 episodes were all about Gabby Petito on the podcast charts. Because it does numbies, bro. Yeah, but like don't you feel like don't they, they have to feel some sort of like guilt about that. I don't think so. I think that's all true crime is, is, is just sociopaths who have no fucking shred yeah. of guilt for the victims. They're fucking, they, like imagine the true crime podcast if there was no murders. Yeah. Like they, well, it mean, would turn them into murderers. I was looking at the podcast charts. There's like the top ten, like six of them are true crime, and one of them is called "My Favorite Murder." Yes, they would. People love that shit. Yeah, no one's committed a murder recently. Yeah, like can the murderers get the fucking work out here? Yeah. We need I mean, something I guess to talk just about. Like an easy way to make a podcast. Yeah, I mean, murder you is just Google a murder. Do you think that you would ever be friends with a murderer? No. You draw the line there. Yeah. Get I off think. your fucking high horse, dude. Yeah. One time, get off your high horse. <laughs> I'd be friend of murderer, just like fucking Jesus would, bro. I fucking kick that back with a murderer. Jesus would be friend of murderer. I would be friends with OJ. Is that whack? No, I don't think so. Do you think it's whack or no? No. Do you think it's whack that I'd be <laughs> friends with OJ right now? If he was sitting here, I would try to make him like me. I mean, I don't know. Like, it's different if someone like goes to court and everything, and they're proven innocent, which OJ was, of course. <laughs> gloves didn't fit. We had to acquit. Look, if the gloves don't fit, consider me a friend. <laughs> like, uh, and you know, OJ would do great numbers for the podcast. That's what I mean. Yeah, like, we can't just Talk have him Kelly on the Martin. talk. Yeah, let's get Kelly. Can we get Kelly Martin here, and we can ask her if we can get OJ. Yeah, let's see if she uh, she can build a relationship yeah. with OJ OJ Simpson or like Casey Anthony. Like, Casey Anthony for sure. I would I would be like I would treat her just like anybody. The else. crazy thing about Casey Anthony is that her daughter was killed, and everyone just assumed it was her. I have empathy for her. <laughs> I felt bad for her. Yeah, she's going through double bad things. Do you remember when she got out of prison? There were people like outside, like holding posters up, being like, "Marry me, Casey Anthony." People like proposing to her. Honestly, that shows that sexism is just about dead in America because it used to be women standing fucking Charles Manson or whatever, yeah. just going crazy about male murderers. The fact that men can now go gaga over a fucking female murderer, that's that's a little bit of balance. True. That's uh, we're being we're progressing as a society. Finally, a little bit of equality here. Yeah, I definitely appreciate about time. that. Yeah, about dude, damn time. It's about time we can stand a, a female serial killer. We yeah. d- I, but the problem is it wasn't. Well, she wasn't a serial killer. Yeah, she killed her she baby while her kid was a, there eating was a cereal. a little bit of a slip-up at home. <laughs> she drowned her kid in a 
punch bowl of of Ori- <laughs> of, uh, of Cheerios. <laughs> Cheerios. Um, we were talking the other day. Would you rather be friends with a murderer or a rapist? And credits us. We all said murderer. Yeah, oh, definitely. We murder. did definitely yeah. murderer. I mean, a sexual crime is beyond the pale. Yeah, but a crime of the flesh. <laughs> <laughs> Who am I to judge? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! The heat of passion, <laughs> manslaughter would be easy to be friends. Oh yeah! If someone's just like, oh, I ran somebody over a I'm car. I'm sure manslaughter actually a lot of good friendships are formed with, through that <laughs> <laughs> support groups. <laughs> yeah, like the f- and everyone's like, hey man, it wasn't your fault. And yeah, the next yeah. thing you know, you're friends. You just drove drunk one night. Like, yeah, don't blame happens. yourself. We've all been there, man. <laughs> they weren't blacked out behind the wheel. They were they were lower class anyway. Don't worry. They were immigrants, so it doesn't matter that you did. <laughs> like, you got to ask me the best part about drinking is driving. <laughs> that's between us. I think there was an NFL player who uh, this, I think Dante Stallworth was like driving drunk, killed a dude, and he got like maybe thirty days, not even. And it was like, oh yeah, like the guy was like a migrant worker and he was crossing the street where he wasn't supposed to be crossing the street. It was probably his fault. It wasn't yeah, even on you. Jesus. Don't even blame yourself, brother. He shouldn't have been there. There was a kid from my... my we'll get you back out there for <laughs> Sunday. <game. laughs> my buddy went to... Don't even sit him in fantasy. One of my like best friends moved to Maine when we were in high school, and he was friends with this kid who killed someone driving, and then just like nothing happened. Didn't even have to... like. I think he went to court. I, he might have not even gone to court. He just like drove home after. <laughs> he didn't get any charges or anything. He fell asleep at the wheel. And uh, was he drunk? No. I mean... It was the day after 4th of July, though, so I think he was a little bit run down. (laughs) Yeah, I guess that's... I don't know. I guess it's just fucking bad luck. I I mean... He stopped... And also, he stopped being friends with him after that. He broke up with him? I think think his lack of uh, empathy for the situation... I like to separate the artist from the art. (laughs) (laughs) What, am I going to stop listening to R. Kelly? Yeah. What am I going to stop being friends with this buddy just because he ruined someone else's life? He needs it more than ever. True. <laughs> he needs friendship now more than ever. We do need to start befriending uh, murderers and my, and manslaughter. Just, just manslaughterers. The only people you can't befriend is um, rape and child porn. Those yeah. are the people who mm-hmm. you have to you have to cut off. Unfortunately, easily. I like picturing a group of dudes who all just slayed their adulterers. They just mean? talk and drink about it. What do you mean, Slade? They all walked in on their wife getting fucked. And they killed the woman? Both. Yeah. I mean, sometimes, like, crimes of passion. You ever seen Shawshank Redemption, brother? <laughs> oh, is that what it, that's what he did, right? Deuce Frain? No, he didn't kill him, though. He's innocent. Well, he doesn't exist. <laughs> <laughs> no, he He's exists. He's a fictional character. Um, uh, we t- I, I briefly touched on the word numbies. Yeah, you did. So numbies is we're we're copywriting it. We're in a legal battle right now. Yeah. We let's just say we're date we're taking Dave Portnoy to the fucking grave. Oh yeah, we're gonna take him to court with his own lawyers. How's yeah. that sound? Yeah. Fucking cannibalize the entire situation because nobody we're currently uh, talking to Alex Cooper, just trying to figure out what her lawyer situation was, and just uh, during the whole Call of Duty scandal, fall in. And, and worse comes to worse, we're just gonna start selling Saturdays or for the boy dads. <laughs> <laughs> Saturdays are for the uh, for the boy dad's flags merch all of that shit if you because two play, two can play that game yeah okay yeah positive vibes only is gonna be our next fucking venture after we're this. gonna figure it out let's just say the bag's coming sooner than later no we we gotta we're we're not saying numbies anymore we're just talking I about said it once we're talking about birds <laughs> 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 when it gets real cold in I here have no. <laughs> <laughs> it's getting cold in here. You feel a draft? We're about to do some burrs. <laughs> when did you come up with that? <laughs> with burrs? Yeah. <laughs> as soon as Dave starts using numbers. I don't know if that's going to catch on as well. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why it sounds like a horse when I do it. <laughs> <laughs> that'll be good. That'll, I think that'll catch on quick. And it just, we're, we're selling parkas. We're selling fucking big ass white jackets, goose down, fucking Canada goose jackets for, for like $800 that just say burr. <laughs> I don't know what, what like we, if, even if we put out if we if we wanted to put out Numbies merch at this point are we even allowed to? I'm gonna talk to the boss. You know what? Why don't we have him on the podcast? Yeah, let's get him in here. Let's get is the, he in right now? No, he's not in. But uh, 
You'll be uh, you'll be with him soon. I'll talk to him on the helipad about it. Yeah. Actually, I better talk to him after we take off because if it gets too contentious, I might not even get. I might not be able to sit with it. Yeah. So they better lock us into that helicopter because. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> That's a good way to get him to talk to him is mid-flight, <laughs> hold his head over out out over the over this helicopter. <laughs> yeah, like in Scarface, just yeah. dangle him out. Stop using numbies. <laughs> it, you've gone on far enough. Yeah. Haven't you done enough? But uh, it's probably going to be a helicopter situation where we're all on, like, headphones. I'll start talking to him, and he'll just, like, turn my volume down. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be screaming at him, like, stop doing numbies. Yeah. <laughs> he'll have no idea what the fuck I'm saying. That'll be good. Yeah. Um, be just you should talk up. to him about Roman a little bit. Oh, this early, brother? <laughs> We should talk to him about Roman. <laughs> Roman. Roman swipes. Roman swipes. <laughs> cock don't work. Wait, what was the original? What was it? Back to Boner Boner Land. What was it? It's like if your cock doesn't work. If your cock... But it's not about cock working or not working. It's just sometimes you need a little bit of help in your life. If and Roman you come can... too fast and your cock don't work. Roman swipes. No, that wasn't it. Fuck. Was it Pompeii by Bastille? I don't remember what it was. I hear Jerusalem bells <laughs> ringing. <laughs> Roman swipes. Most guys have tried different ways to last longer. Listing off the na- listing off baseball teams and baseball players or p- names of baseball guys who you know. Sometimes that shit doesn't work. You doing the ad read right now, brother? <laughs> I was going to say something that was inappropriate. And what I did it. was I put it, it back inside All my right. body. All and, right, I'll uh, take this one over. And save the day. The folks at Roman, an online men's health company, are changing the game with Roman Swipes. The secret to lasting longer while you're sexing. They're easy to use. Just take the swipes out of the packet, swipe it on, let it dry, and you're good to go. That's it. Get Roman.com slash sun. You can get your first swipes for just $5 when you choose a monthly plan. That's GetRoman.com slash sun. What you're going to want to do is you get a Roman swipe and you're going to swaddle your penis like the newborn babe Jesus Christ at, at the... Uh the inn where he was born and you're going to wrap it up in a roman swipe you're going to rub it down and suddenly you're going to be lasting so long in bed that your significant other is going to say ooh la la that shit feels good look <laughs> <laughs> look i'm going to say you're going to want to get a roman swipe and just douse your dick in it oh yeah just rub it all over your dick like you're trying to uh De- disinfect your arm before you take a, a shot of penicillin or something like that. Oh, yeah. You're going to really oh, want to... Oh, no. You're going to wrap it up like a grape leaf. You want to fucking double wrap that shit. Yeah. Swallow your cock with a Roman swipe, and your your significant other will, sw- will will thank you, whether you're fucking a man or a woman. Oh, yeah. It doesn't matter mm-hmm. because your penis is oh, going yeah. in somewhere, and you're not going to want to feel it so you can last long. Oh, yeah. And I said, what about... Roman swipes. And I said, what about <laughs> Roman swipes on your day? Now that you've mastered um, stand-up comedy, what do you? What, what's your next? What's next? Yeah, like what's your um, next uh, like passion project going to be? Painting, maybe? Rap battling, believe it or not. Oh, no. I want to rap battle you, bro. Yo. First it went... Roan. Phone. Home. <laughs> scone. <laughs> Don't break break out scone. I take a on scone. Me. I eat a scone. <laughs> I kill a roan. <laughs> no! <laughs> Don't go there. Not the fucking breakfast snacks. <laughs> <laughs> Don't rhyme me with breakfast snacks. No, I want to rap against Adrian Forrester. I want to rap against the guy from uh, Macro Dosing. That's who I really want to rap battle. But if if you want to fucking if you want to sharpen up the sword, me and you, we could do that. You know what I mean? Yeah, for sure, for sure. Would love to hop in the booth with you again, brother. Yeah, man, it's about fucking time that we put out our track. People keep on asking me when you're gonna get back in the ring. When are you gonna get back in the ring? Big Gruen's always trying to book me for matches. I'm like Gruen, <laughs> fucking just give me a break right what now. What was Gruen hitting us up about yesterday? He was like, "Do you want me to introduce you to Jadakus?" He kept on being like, "Would you like to meet Lil Wayne?" I was like, uh, oh, whatever yeah. you say, Gru. 
Yeah, he was like, what did he say? Oh, he said, he was like, Sass, he's like, you. He was like, Sass, how would you like to meet Tim Dillon? <laughs> like, actually, this actually happened. He was Little trying to does he know. Yeah, he was like, what would you do if I could told you I could make a dream come true? <laughs> you could meet Tim Dillon. I know I know some people over at the Make-A-Wish Foundation. We yeah. could tell them you have cancer, and we'd slide <laughs> yeah. you right in there with Tim Dillon. How does that sound? Just put on that skull cap that you had in some of your Twitter pictures, and we'll pretend that you have melanoma. We'll get you in there with Tim Dillon. <laughs> what do you say, champ? Does that sound nice to you? I was like, look, bro. I was like, look, buddy. Been there, done that. <laughs> I actually just got a DM from the stand. Really? really? Saying, you around tonight? Tim Dillon is hanging. What, did he kill himself? <laughs> <laughs> I don't really want to go to, I don't really want to just show up at the stand and be like, hey, Tim. Hey, we need someone to identify stand, his the body. The stand told me you were going to be here. I'm what keeping tabs. On? I'm keeping tabs on you. What did they DM you on? Uh, Twitter. Gotcha. Um, what if you two met in the middle and did a roast battle? Who? You and Sass. Of Against who? Against each other. Each other. That shit don't, don't sound sweet. So I, the, so I'd the kill him. Boys, the Comtown Boys did that. You would kill me. I, I don't think I'd be good at writing roasts. Why? What would you say? I'd just be like, stupid ass. <laughs> <laughs> but if, it is. It's like a comedy battle. If you rap brought hybrid. your if you brought your crowd from Monday night, oh, I'd smoke you. That would destroy. <laughs> See, that's the thing. Stupid that ass. Thing. That was the thing about Monday night. <laughs> Anything I said, they would have laughed at, except for my opening. The joke. biggest reaction of the night was when you said, "I'm depressed." Yeah, people were cheering. Yeah, let's go. <laughs> the three biggest reactions were one, "I'm depressed." People fucking stood up and applauded. <laughs> 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 Uh, two, when you said, I don't like New York, people fucking were like saluting you yeah. like you were a fucking soldier coming home. And three was when you said, fuck homeless people. Oh, people yeah. were like, yes. They love that. Someone was like, did you hear the guy in the background going, seriously, seriously. <laughs> did you hear that? I was sitting next to him. Yeah, seriously. <laughs> I was like, we should take all the homeless people and put them in prison. And he's just like, seriously, <laughs> seriously. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't. I mean, is it punching down to make fun of homeless people? I don't think so. It was a joke. I, I just said I said I'm kidding directly after. Yeah, and I don't even think you should have had to say I'm kidding. Well, uh, of course I knew the cancel culture was gonna try and come out and get me. I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm kidding. Okay. I was like Jesus, guys. What is this? This is a comedy show. That's what I can't riff. <laughs> Louis C.K. used to say that after he would like finish on a girl's unsuspecting feet. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Don't cancel this. I'm actually kidding. I was like, guys, 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 guys. I was like, this is why I hate doing comedy in New York. You can't say anything anymore. Every single stand-up comedian comes on stage and they're like. Yeah. <sighs> these New York crowds, these New York crowds. And it's like, it won't even be like they said anything offensive. It'll be like they just said something that wasn't funny, and then they'll be like, <sighs> can't say anything here, can you? I think that the problem with uh, any type of like open mic or new comic situation is everybody thinks that they're on their journey to be the funniest person in the world. I think they also think that they, because like, they watch like Louis C.K. and Tim Dillon and Bill Burr and they're like I have to be as offensive as I possibly can yeah but then when they say it, it's just like uncomfortable and not funny well I think one of the best things about your co your stand-up from like an analytics perspective was like you had a clear perspective yeah. it's like I think it is a lot about having like a perspective and like I don't like New York is like a clear like direct perspective that like can be funny like I like New York but like that's not necessarily like that's clear perspective but it's not like a funny perspective and I think like maintaining the perspective I don't know if I'm breaking it down too much but I feel like having a strong perspective is something that like can carry you far. Yeah. The shit about uh only uh only good boys get to be happy was uh was really funny too. Thank you. Appreciate it. And uh that's it's also the gayest thing ever when you're like, "Hey, that was like a really funny joke that you said." I always have that problem when I, I'm talking to comedians I know, and I'm like, hey, like, your set was really funny. Like, <laughs> I always just feel like such a fucking idiot. Because, oh, like, of course they fucking, of course they thought it was funny. Or, like, are they supposed to add a joke onto that or just, like, say thank you? Giving and, like, receiving praise is something that I think that uh, we're not even great at as, as a society. Like, nobody knows how to, like, take a compliment. Well, yeah. Roan doesn't like compliments. His buddies told me. What? That you're, that you're humble. <laughs> Did they say that? Yeah. <laughs> Fuck you. Yes. You were talking about like when you first started rap battling or something, and they're like, he won't even talk about it. He's too humble. 
<laughs> I mean, I think that there is a. I I just think it's like incredibly corny when people like list their uh, accomplishments or like when people have like a look at me perspective. And I yeah. probably need to get better at that. But like when people are just like, "Yeah, I did this fucking super sick fucking thing," like I just think that like, uh, I don't know. I just think it's <laughs> I think it's corny. <laughs> yeah, I agree. <laughs> when people are just tooting their own horn, it's just uh, it's tough. But then like then people can wind up taking advantage of you and saying that they created numbies if you're not always saying, like, yeah. hey, I fucking created this. Yo, I fucking made this thing. You got to pound the table for yourself, I guess, sometimes. Yeah, that's true. And the worst part is that Dave was, like, talking about, he's like, his girlfriend, he's like, yeah, well, she told me about it. She showed it to me. <laughs> he's like, I love it. He's like, I love saying numbies. It's my new thing. Just, Just talk directly to her because I guess she listens. <laughs> or she doesn't. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, we did, the we did like, the research on the yak. We Dax, Dax Shepard has said numbies before we said numbies, but you also said numbies without knowing. I started saying numbies because you started saying numbies, and probably like the first or second podcast in here were on uh, recorded words saying, saying numbies, numbies, and you've also typed it in 2019. That was the first person at Barstool to say it. Historically. Historically. Ever. So take that, Jenna Marbles, bitch. <laughs> You're going to have to fucking Jenna live with Marbles. that forever. I forgot about Jen. I should check in with her sometime soon. Yeah, mental health is Didn't fucking... Didn't she quit YouTube? Like she's taking a mental health... We've talked about this yeah, before. we did. We talked about it. We clipped it. We did. We called her Harriet Tubman. Uh, our landlord <laughs> is wanted for murder. <laughs> well, it was like a whole thing. We went downstairs and there's a letter and it was like, if you see management or the landlord, his name, uh, please call the police. He's wanted for sex trafficking. Or trafficking, or human trafficking, sorry. It wasn't all sex related. <laughs> Wait, so he's just trafficking humans that he's like a coyote out of the apartment. Is he just uh, like smuggling people out of town? Out yeah. of, out Did I tell you about when he walked into our apartment? Just walked in. I feel like landlords love to do that shit. Dude, he walked, he like couldn't get in through the front door, so he walked up and like went in through like this upstairs door that was unlocked. That's and he was like, hello? <laughs> and I was like, hi. And he's like, oh, I couldn't get in because the door's locked. We didn't want you in here, <laughs> yeah. you fucking pervert. It's our apartment. And I think landlords, like, live in, like, I think landlords are the biggest loopholest oh, yeah. people of all time. And uh, they'll love to just, like, I think girls probably have it way worse than dudes. Like, a landlord will, like, figure out a woman's, like, shower schedule by looking at the water bills or some shit yeah. and, like, walk in exactly as they think that they're about to find a woman in a towel. Yeah. Like, without fail, I mean, our landlords landlord, are perverts. Our landlord, like, found out that we worked at Barstool through our emails. And then, like, he started, like, or our super, and he was, like, inviting us out to dinner, like, or, or inviting us to get beers, like, every day. Yeah. He was well, like, what kind of beers, f- what kind of beers you boys drink? <laughs> Would love to crush him. <laughs> yeah, Would love to crush some beers so you could. Sophia. He said he was friends with Alex Cooper. Shut up. Yeah. Like he is, up. too. We'll have to compare notes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll have to do it. And I hit her up, and I was like, you know this dude? And she was like, don't waste your time with that <laughs> freak. He was, like, he was like, oh, that? I was like, yeah, Josh. And she was like, that's a name I haven't heard in years. And then she was, like, we, she was like, Harry, stay away from him. He is dangerous. <laughs> stay away from him. Did she explain what she meant? What kind no, of dangerous? she couldn't. She was, like, name, she was like, we'd way. have to meet up in person. <laughs> yeah. She's like, I can't tell you over the phone. It's too it's too dangerous. Oh, is that why you guys got cocktails at Lilia in Brooklyn? No, we were actually, we when I went out to LA, we, we, we met up. Oh, shit. Where'd you, what, uh... Or you do not want to say it was like a whole thing. Like we had to like sit at opposite tables at like a at like a Starbucks. Oh really? And wear like glasses. Well, because she gets followed by the fucking paparazzi yeah. now. It's fucking. And she crazy. was like, "Are you sure you don't have a tail?" And I was like, "What's going on?" I was like, "What's so bad about Josh?" And she was like, "You don't even want to know." And then I like she showed me a folder of just pictures of him and Jeffrey Jeffrey Epstein. Shut up. Yeah. Josh? Yeah. Oh, no. I know. <laughs> oh, fucking no. I know. Is that why everyone's been, uh, I've been reading in like the New York Post that like you and her got plastic surgery together or something like that? It's just a smear campaign, right? Yeah. I, I mean, she did. I didn't, though. Oh, really? I was thinking about getting like a, a butt lift, but <laughs> I was like, nah, I'm good. I'm too young. <laughs> just get your stomach fat pushed around <laughs> to your ass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I mean, Kanye West does it. True. He said he just Big doesn't have the, he he said he doesn't have time to work out so he just gets uh, <laughs> liposuction which is like I'd imagine Kanye has a good amount of free time. He said he doesn't. He said he doesn't have he doesn't time even to work like out. Do like interviews or anything. 
But that doesn't mean he has free time. He's probably just over like an NPC machine, like fucking making yeah. beats, like fucking pounding some shit out. Or I guess he does the Yeezy stuff. He does I guess he does that cute little Yeezy brand. Yeah. <laughs> How's that Good luck going? with that. How's yeah. that going for him? Keep trying. Yeah, I'm sure he'll get somewhere with it someday. You no, know, I always say when my friends come to me and they're like, hey, I want to start a clothing brand. I'm like, it's hard. <laughs> Not just anybody can do it. Trust yeah. us. We've made boy dad sweatshirts that are good, that are really good. <laughs> and still enough people haven't bought them. And maybe that's time you look at yourself in the mirror and say, yeah. why am I not wearing two boy dad sweatshirts? <laughs> <laughs> why Winter's I... coming up. The hoodie one on the inside, so you can put the hoodie over, yeah. and then the crew neck one on the outside. Yeah, when winter's coming up and you're going to want to be warm. And no one wears winter jackets these days. It's all about layers. Oh, definitely not. And if you're going to wear a winter jacket, you want to have at least a hoodie and a crew neck on under under, it. Underneath it. Yeah, it's all layers. Trust us, we learn from the best, okay? Virgil Abloh, Alex Cooper, and Chicken Fry, and us. The Mount Rushmore of being able to push merch. Yeah. We fucking move units. We're like the new Supreme, except for more Supreme than that. We, uh, what actually happened with the landlord was we got, uh... It, we got like a note saying that there was a that they're wanted for burglary, like the whole. They were like, if the, the note says if you're, it's on the someone's door, and it says, if you see management or the landlord, call the police. They're wanted for burglary. It's a, in massive letters. What uh, do you think they broke into someone's apartment? I don't know. I can't even. I have no I idea. Know. I'm excited. I, I haven't don't think seen. We have to pay anymore. Yeah, I mean, if they're wanted. I would say you should do do a true crime about it yourselves and just kind of like take the case into your own hands. I but like if no one got murdered, no one's gonna give a fuck. I met the dude, the landlord once. He's killed before, <laughs> and he will again. So I'm not really sure if I'm trying to cross paths. He just found like a wet, befriend him. He bro. found like a wet beer box on the on our roof, and he came down and he put a knife against my throat. <laughs> and he was like, "If I ever." Ever find this on the roof again? On my roof. <laughs> and then he just threw the knife behind yeah. him and it landed fucking dead in the middle of a picture on the refrigerator. Of me. Boy, yeah. 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 I Boy, haven't met him. I no, he is like a scary a dude. European guy in a suit smoking a cigarette. Does very he have a nice like car? Very much like that, but he's very much old. He's older. He's okay. like, he looks like he's been in like the mob. Does he drive like a red convertible that like is is like a Mazda or something like that? I don't know what car he drives. I just one morning I woke up to people up on our roof and then I heard screaming outside and I went and I opened the door and I was like in my underwear. <laughs> and he was like, well, there's beer bottle. He was like, drinking on the roof. And I was like, what? He was like, you're drinking on the roof. And then he told me that he was going to call the police if we ever drink on the roof again. Wasn't he trying to like get fucked up with you like right no, no, that one was the story super. ago? That was the oh, super. Got you. You guys were drinking on the roof without me. Huh? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and he you're told under me he was arrest. Call the police, and then I got an email from our super, and he was like, "Hey guys, uh, just make sure you're not like leaving empties on the roof." First off, they're never going to call the police because they're probably operating some fucking Ponzi scheme at a loss where there's never been an inspection on the property ever or whatever. <laughs> like our landlord in college was like a definitely a pervert. Like it was like Central Pennsylvania, which is like ground zero for perverts in the entire United States. But he was also like, he never did an inspection on any of his houses. Like a single fire would have taken down five houses at once. He's just a general scumbag type of person that would walk in on any time, but uh, on anybody at any time, but also just be tweaking out on meth. Also the meth capital. There's a, pedophiles and fucking meth heads always run in the same circles. Yeah, it goes hand in There's no always way. a big, o no mm -hmm. way, bro. You got a lot of fucking life experiencing to do because <laughs> you've never been in a circle with a pedophile and a meth head because it's a. I mean, okay, so do you mean just like a traditional pedophile or like a Jeffrey Epstein type pedophile? Oh, traditional. Because I was thinking more Low like level. Coke pills for that. Oh, well, those are the fucking master. Those are yeah. the goats. <laughs> those are. <laughs> You think pedophiles just like sit around passing around a meth pipe arguing over who the goat was? Probably, yeah. Dude, it was it's like MJ versus LeBron, but it's like Michael Jackson versus Epstein. Epstein. Well, it was a much more physical game. <laughs> yeah. Jackson was playing. Clinton's underrated for sure. <laughs> He's up there, but Clinton Clint couldn't have played in today's Bro, game. Clinton's a sneaky top three. Sneaky top three. <laughs>
<laughs> not in today's game. Not the way that <laughs> the authorities will chase you down. Dan Schneider is like the great, greatest college athlete of all time. Yeah, yeah but he couldn't pros. translate to the pros, though. He just he was like Reggie Bush. He's about to get stripped of his of his GOAT status. We're Mount about to, Rushmore we're about to lose all our sponsors talking bad about the Clintons like that. <laughs> <laughs> Keep the fucking Clinton stamps out of your mouth. Not you Vincero. know it's good for you. Not Vincero, that's for sure. Well, the people over at Vincero are actually great friends of ours. <laughs> great friends of the podcast. Vincero blesses... I mean, they bless me with the fucking beautiful watch. I don't know what the fuck anybody's talking about. I was out to dinner with my dad this past weekend, and... Uh, Papa. He tried to steal my... Oh, you remember Papa? I remember Pops. Papa Ferrone? Oh, yeah. Hey, Papa. Uh, you know, I would have been... I told you I would have been Frank Ferrone the fourth. No, it's some bullshit. Papa you would have been what? Frank Ferrone the fourth. Oh, fuck yeah. That would have been awesome. My dad's Frank Ferrone the third. I wouldn't go with Frank Ferrone the fourth. It wasn't up to me. Bro. Frank These Ferrone the fourth. These you have a say. Yeah, exactly. I wanted to have a say, and I had no say in my name, and... Uh, the ways you can have a say is by 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 buying the watch that you want. Yeah, the good folks exactly. over at Vincero. That's how you can Vincero have a say. Vincero Collective is their name, not yes. formerly Vincero Watches. They have evolved to Vincero Collective. Well, they have sh- they have sunglasses, they have bracelets, and they have the watch. I mean, they have a, a ton of different mm-hmm. things. It's and the not fun just thing watches. about Vincero is that they've actually been carbon neutral since 2019, investing in solar energy, hydropower, and forestry. The team at Vincero hooked us up with a bunch of accessories, and they are awesome. What we love most about the brand is their versatility. Bitch, no, co- we don't. We like their versatility. <laughs> their versatility. <laughs> you said there's a the what? word versatile is versatile because you could say it more than one way. With a collection for every look and colorway for every outfit, Vincero makes it easy to elevate your style at a fair price. Sunglasses, blue light glasses. The sunglasses I have are the only sunglasses I've ever worn that actually make me look fly as hell. Yeah, you do. Fly as fuck. Most other sunglasses just make people look blind, but the Vinceros make you actually look good. The blue light glasses will help you with staring at your screen late oh, to yeah. the hours of the night if you want to watch four hours of mo- or four movies in a row in a day. Yeah, these lenses are polarized. The frames are handcrafted watches. Sexy ass wallets too. The watches are from Japan, and the leather is is the leather and marble is from Italy. Ah, huh. I didn't realize that was an Italian. I didn't know that. Well, it's not. It's from Italy. You just said. Hold your horses, brother. All right. Fifteen percent off. A plot on an entire order for. Oh, oh, sorry. You hold your horses. To the people up in Sarah, I apologize. Fifteen percent. <laughs> 15% off applied on an entire order only for a limited time, plus they cover all shipping costs. Go to V-I-N-C-R-O Collective. No, no, no. V-I-N-C-E-R-O. V-I-N-C-E-R-O Collective.com slash sun. Promo code sun. Once again, that is Vincero Collective.com slash sun. We need you pussies to be hitting us up. I want to see you with a sleeve of Vincero oh, yeah. watches. <laughs> oh, yeah. I want to see you going from your shoulder to your wrist exclusively Vincero Collective watches because they have a beautiful and deep collection of watches. That I fucking promise you. And for every 100 Vincero watches you buy, me and Rome will send you one for free. And that's our fucking promise. And that's promise. a promise. And that's a fucking guarantee. And that is a promise. What You buy 100, we will hand deliver you your 101st watch. <laughs> yeah, that is a goddamn promise. And we'll go to and the I end never of Earth. break a promise I make to myself. <laughs> Exa- or to, or to our, our or to our listeners. listeners. If you're living in Madagascar or Juneau, Alaska, we'll pull up on I don't that care ass. if you live in goddamn Afghanistan. <laughs> I'll find a way over. And I'll get you that 101st <laughs> Vincero Collective. We need watch. to smuggle sass into Afghanistan. <laughs> <laughs> One of our most loyal buyers <laughs> is out there. <laughs> Just get in there, damn it! <laughs> Me and Dave are gonna take the helicopter, and then we're gonna fight to the death out in out on the deserts of Afghanistan. It's just gonna be over f- numbies. Frankie Borelli and Spider with fucking. <laughs> Massive guns with fifty cow guns. <laughs> Cover me! And you're just fucking barrel rolling to, to hand get to, deliver to get to the watch. A sexy ass fucking silver watch. I went with a silver number. Oh Ellen's got the matte black. Yep. Thank you very much. I got for some, giving it to we me. We gifted our producer a Vincero Collective watch. Yeah. yeah over the, at Chicklets, yeah, they did a different a vlog brand. About it. And uh, yeah. 
<laughs> yeah. They did some nobody brand. Yeah. <laughs> Not like Vincero. Uh, yeah, we did though. We we actually gave him a gift. A gift that's worth receiving. V- Vincero. You pull up to the club in Vincero, people are going to be turning heads. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ch- what the fuck is that? Vincero. Well, the way the light catches it. <laughs> what? The way the light catches it is just... No, I, w- <laughs> I was pretending to do, like, you know, the Drake. You know that music video? All right. I was making sure it wasn't Italian. Yeah, I know. Um, <laughs> Drake's the fucking best. Drake's the, the goat. Geek. Is that an unpopular? I like how we have so much bar stool here. Where do you boys work? <laughs> yeah, take that down. Seriously. <laughs> Until Dave apologizes for the whole <laughs> Numbies fiasco, I think that we're going to be putting up some new HBO. Some- exclusive. <laughs> I ordered boards three months ago. We just gotta make. I mean, the one thing I learned around here: if you want to, you want to do something, you gotta do it yourself. You want to do something right, you gotta do it yourself. And I think that that's time for us to go buy a fucking paint by numbers class or one of those wine. You know the the, the classes where you like drink wine and like paint something. Or did mm-hmm. those, all those die There's out? One did the right pandemic on the Lancy, kill those? Yeah, those died out. What were th- what were those called? It's like a it's like a wine and it had a, some they had some sweet ass rhyming girly ass name. No idea. Something that the women would love. Something the women would go crazy for. Bro, I'm trying to get I, I'm trying to get a yoga class. I'm trying to get some fucking yoga in my life. I feel like I, yeah, I could I've benefit done it once. It's hard. Paint and sip. Paint and no, no. no. Keep looking. Wine and paint and lounge. No. Paint and pour. Pinot's palette. Pino's no. penis. No, that's funny. <laughs> no, that's fucking funny. Pins that's core. Add that to the fucking sketch. Were Booze you surprised that we weren't uh, sipping paint? Were you surprised that we weren't offered the SNL position after the Amazon video? Well, I think that there's something clear that's going on there, and that Lauren Michaels is in Jeff Bezos's pocket. Yeah, and yeah. he was like, I assume don't listen to all your best advisors who are telling you to hire them because of that. I mean it. I was shocked when I saw those three new hires. I was like, where is Roan and where am I? We're the true edge lords. We're the true edge masters. <laughs> We're no obsessed one... with pushing the boundaries in comedy, which I guess SNL doesn't like. Yeah, like now they're just going to have like a Gen Z like musical number in every fucking skit. Yeah. Like, like when I think of three people who could have changed SNL forever, I think of me, you, and Shane Gillis. And Vince, Vince Vincero from Vincero Watches. <laughs> <laughs> if he was in there, he would have fucking changed everything. In yeah. his pinstripe fucking four-piece suit. Did you get that email from Lauren? No, he hit me up, but uh, he called me. Yeah. Uh, we still talk. Um, he's, he's been dodging my calls. Yeah, I mean, that, that shows more than anything that there's like a global elites type of thing going yeah. on and that you're kind of being, I mean, yeah. well, how do you think they stole the election? Because apparently he knows my landlord too. Oh, really? Yeah. <laughs> Maybe that's what got stolen, the fucking SNL gig from you. I know, the mail. It was probably, I assume oh. it was a letter in the mail. <laughs> and he just fucking burned it up. What an absolute piece of shit, man. Maybe we should uh, enact some, some civilian justice on your landlord. How's yeah. that sound? Oh, yeah. Maybe we should beat his ass. Let's break his fucking skull. Yeah, we and should. And that is a threat. And that is a threat. <laughs> okay. How's that sound? <laughs> Drown you in your own f- fucking tub. We should call the super right now. Hey, buddy. Uh, so I'm s- there's, some <laughs> there's some rumors working their way around the complex. Call him. I'll call him. No, let's have Roan call him. If yeah. Anything. All right. Also, Roan, there's a Henny in paint in Brooklyn. Henny in paint? Yeah. Shut up. That You know, I mean, Ebony loves to talk about Henny. Um, we'll shut him out. 9611 Glenwood Road. Henny and paint. Do you think they only serve up Henny? And what kind of shit are you painting? If I'm off the Henny, I'm liable to paint some titties. <laughs> <laughs> you know I'm painting titties. All right, you do you text? actually want to call this dude? Yeah. I'm scared. Just, Just tell me the I script. I have feeling he's not going to answer. Just tell me what the script is. All right. Well, Am I well, saying I'm you? No. So I'm just saying that... So Maybe we should just threaten him severely. Where is it? <laughs> um, I just sent you his contact. Don't call yet. Don't call yet. Okay. We need to think about what we're going to say. Just say I saw a sign. Hey, I'm new in the apartment. Uh, I live up in 3B. It's not where we live. Don't worry. <laughs> and uh, 
<laughs> so that just made it way easier for other people. Or just be like, you're my dad. Say you're my dad. Yeah. Would, oh, that, yeah. would that work? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Say you're a son of a boy. Or no. I'm a dad. I'm, I'm a, a dad of dad. a boy. <laughs> I'm a boy dad. <laughs> Say. Fuck. Because I don't want it to come back to us. Well, it will. It will. My son lives in the apartment building. Sorry, I've heard some rumors about soon. somebody stealing something. Say, say we heard, there was a sign saying that there was a that to call the police if we see you because there's a burglary. Yeah, I'll send you a picture of the sign if you want to look at it quick before the call. I'll just call. Him. No, no, no. <laughs> Don't say anything about me. Say your Dukes's. Say your Evan. Say your Evan's dad. No, say Dukes's dad, not Evan. <laughs> What's Dukes? Pussy better not answer. Leave a message. Yeah. I reached the voice conference. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll bleep it out. We'll bleep it out. It's fine. Your name and phone number. I'll return your call as soon as possible. Thanks. At the tone, please record your message. When you have finished recording, you may hang up or press one for more options. Hey, Josh. Uh, you don't know me, but I'm Kevin's dad. Kevin is a tenant of yours, and I received some troubling news from him the other day. It said that there was uh, basically what was tantamount to an Old West wanted poster, and uh, all that was short of it was about $10,000 in, in, in prizes for finding you. And uh, I wanted to know, are you putting my children in a dangerous situation, or, 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 or maybe I just want to know what's going on and why someone would accuse you of stealing anything. So, uh... I'm sure it's just all a big misunderstanding, but why don't you give me a call back? Uh, you you know the number. Okay, I did it. I hope Cat's out of the bag. Um, oh you guys no, are fucked. They're probably playing that to their lawyer right now. Yeah, oh, you guys are fucked. You guys are big time fucked. Because uh, that wasn't even a good prank call. That was just like a fact-finding uh, I mission. I mean, in the best case scenario, he calls and he tells us what's going on. I'd love yeah. to know. Yeah, honestly, like, uh, we're doing nothing wrong here. Between me, you, and Kevin, I killed a guy. <laughs> a couple, actually. I'd love to get the rent down from, like, 84 to 64, maybe. 84? What is 84? How much you guys so pay? you pay. Jesus Christ. Your apartment's a shithole. You're paying fucking $8,400 well, a uh, month? Owen handles all my finances. I didn't even know we were paying that much. <laughs> That's how much you guys are fucking paying? You didn't paying? even know we were paying. No. <laughs> I thought it was free. <laughs> I thought Barstool put us in that apartment. <laughs> like it's like a European basketball club where they just put you up to fucking live there once you get there. Is he calling back? Yeah, this is him right now. Yo, big man. No, it's not him. <laughs> oh, fuck you. <laughs> you had a, a look oh, of terror on Oh, motherfucker. Yeah. Oh, you sick mofo. I'm back in the prank game. Oh. All right, so did this just become a prank podcast? Yes, it did. Florentine, yeah. get the fuck in here. <laughs> we be pranking. Yes, bro. Let's get to pranking. Who else should we call? We're McDonald's? ruthless. Blake Griffin? Hey, Blake, it's Harry. You suck? <laughs> we tried to, I had, uh, my friend's, always we like it's our favorite activity to do is prank call people we just would do it for like way too deep into our lives and like mm -hmm. uh oh that doesn't surprise me at all you guys probably still do that yeah 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> and we have people that we've been prank calling for like 15 years when we were at penn state we were like going to a walmart that night and ron and his friends are running around like it, it, it was like stuff i used to do with my friends we get like kicked out of target when we were in like sixth grade <laughs> except ron and his buddies are all fully grown adults and they're riding the bikes around Walmart <laughs> and kicking balls into the ceiling. You were you were participating loosely. I was lifting weights mainly. Yeah, you were having a fucking and you were, you were getting like the guns off the wall and like fucking pretending True. to shoot people and shit like there that. There was a bow and arrow. There's a lot of happiness and youthful and youthfulness at a Walmart, just in general. That's yeah, very. That's a very good thing. To, that's a very good thought, Owen. <laughs> There's there a lot is of happiness and youthfulness. Just in, just in general, there just is. You just gotta go That's find very it. True, I didn't think about that. <laughs> you just gotta go seek it out and find it. Yeah, dude, we fucking we we try to get rowdy. We we just yeah. like to have a fun ass time. Yeah, when me and Roan and his buddies were in Penn State, we all agreed. We were like, dude, we're never growing up. <laughs> He's like, I want to be. We were, I want to be young forever. That like, was look right, at that this. Was right look around. We, that was right before we graduated, <laughs> and we haven't seen each other since. Right before we. 
got our diplomas. This isn't it for us, boys. <laughs> Wait, who, uh, there's a story about Ben Simmons doing that. There's like, I don't even know if that's a real meme, but like, uh, they said when Ben Simmons was graduating high school, he like gathered up all his friends and said that like, like we're going to be close for like the rest of our lives. And it's a fucking promise. Like we're going to make a pact to ourselves. It's a guarantee. And then the next day after he graduated, he unfollowed them all <laughs> on <laughs> social media. Well, that like, sounds like one of those like billionaire posts. <laughs> yeah. Those billionaire Instagram posts. When it's like, I just want to get rich enough to cut off everybody. Yeah. <laughs> if your inner circle isn't talking about entrepreneurship. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> the best one was, I, I retweeted this one the other day. It was, it was of uh, Jennifer Aniston. And it was just so clearly something that Jennifer Aniston never said. Salute to the goat, Jennifer Aniston. Oh, yeah. She's so goaded. She has like... <laughs> transitioned over several i mean you didn't see kudrow or fucking courtney cox goading like that you didn't no. see anyone else from friends goading like the way she goats oh no she went girl boss mode so there's this picture <laughs> of jennifer aniston and then i'll read it before sex you help each other to get naked and then after sex you only dress yourself more it's supposed to say moral of the story i'm assuming but it says mortal of the story mortal of the story in life no one helps you and you're fucked <laughs> and then it's a bit like so Jennifer Aniston said that I wonder when she said that one yeah like, when hey, she was Jennifer, talking to Tucker Max Jennifer what are you thinking about the reunion of friends look before <laughs> sex you help each other to get naked and then after sex you only it's like the, gr the grammar and this is so bad too it just doesn't make any fucking sense before sex you help each other to get naked and after sex you only dress yourself they're also like talking about something that happens like in a pretty specific scenario as if it happens to everybody. Yeah. It's not like every time someone has sex, they fucking are undressing the other person. I fucking who, whip I off the drawers like... Uh, <laughs> I don't understand. Like what Jim that Carrey. Means. I don't understand what this means at all. Once you're, you're on your own, once you get fucked... For what is like, kind of what is the, the the whole thing could have just been in life no one helps you when you're fucked the whole sex thing before makes no sense doesn't even relate at all yeah it's a premise when you're alone you're cleaning up your own jizz but when you jizz on somebody they they have to clean it up for you yeah premise is nobody helps you when you're <laughs> fucked <laughs> nobody will squeeze you the jizz off of you once you're fucked when you go to the store and you forget to tip the bartender well the bartender might not be happy about that the moral of the story is that only you can get yourself dressed after sex. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it doesn't make any sense. So that would be like if someone posted that exactly with like Jeff Bezos behind it, he would get like a million likes on, on Instagram and then all the replies would just be like the fire emoji and the hands praying emoji. Or Gary Vee. I mean, what are, what like I, there are, there's also like the implicit suggestion there that like people should be helping you get dressed. Which it's is like, what I don't. Why do why no one you, should be helping you get why dressed would anyway? You need help getting dressed. It like doesn't make like zipping up your fly for you, or like it'd be the like helpful thing to do. Like it's not helpful for someone to help you get dressed. No, like unless you're a much, fucking child, yeah, it'd be much more of a pain in the ass. Yeah. Epstein was probably helping his fucking uh, his probably tie tie that tie that all together. Yeah, callback. Yeah, a little bit of a callback joke. That was good callback. I noticed you didn't use any callbacks while you were doing your stand up set. Yeah, I mean, I got a lot of recommendations, but like you know, the what recommendations can do? I read through the comments. Some of them weren't bad, but some of them were the most obnoxious thing ever. Like, hey, I used to be an open micer before life caught up to me. Maybe cut down on the pacing. It's just because you're nervous. Yeah, like, dude, suck a dick, dude. Like nobody wants to hear your fucking <laughs> your input on like what you sh he should be doing better. Yeah, I mean, most people were like, you had stake Twitter on your fucking comedy thing. It's like, oh, it looks pretty good. Just let it sit for a couple more minutes, and then yeah. it'll be fine. I think it's just because comedy, stand-up comedy, is such like a popular thing that people like watching, and they love to like critique it because they've seen a lot of stand-up comedy. But it's just like uh, with anything, people critique things just having no idea what goes into it, or just like yeah. they they want to feel like the expert of the scenario, so they're like, you know what would actually help yeah. is if uh, you held the mic a little bit farther and like you don't touch the wall. Yeah. When you're leaning on the mic stand, that's actually projecting insecurities. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of feedback. A ton. Oh, yeah. I saw the one guy said that he was surprised that you didn't fall through the floor. You were pacing back and forth so hard. Uh, I didn't see that one. Uh, I just Good. made it up. <laughs> Glad I got it now, though. 
<laughs> no, yeah, I was pacing very hard. Oh yeah, and I didn't notice until after. Yeah, it's yeah. tough to it's what tough to look do? back on your shit. It's tough to uh, watch your stuff with a, a critical eye. Yeah, there's like a, a handful of battle raps I did that like I've never never watched in my life, just because I don't want to look at it and just be like, should have done that differently. Yeah, I just want the praise. <laughs> Well, bro, I, that's why you got the throne. I just edit out the negative comments. Just oh, have yeah. somebody sift Delete through all of them. It made me. Ha- it made me get the itch a little bit. Seeing I, him I on had, stage. Uh, I had Owen on, up until like four a.m. last night, just deleting all the mean comments for me. <laughs> <laughs> I bought him like a. I got. I bought him a large coffee from Dunks. From Dunkies. Dunkies. <laughs> I bought what him a large coffee Starbies? from Dunks. There's a new coffee place in New York that you have to try. You know what place looks like it sucks dick is that, like, what is it, like Jeffries or some shit like that? Yeah. Gregory's. Yes, Gregory's. Gregory's. It's, pretty, it's pretty good. Is it? Yeah. Nah, Variety is the only place I go to in New York. Shout out Variety. Yes, sir. Shout out Variety. Can you do more VIP list? What? Come that was again. the impression you were just doing. I thought. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Wait, that bitch on, on, uh, TikTok. on, on TikTok. <laughs> you guys have to go to McDonald's. They have this new meal called a Happy Meal, and it's for kids, but only if you're a kid on the inside. <laughs> She's the fucking. Oh, is that that girl? Didn't we see her in public? Yeah, yeah. The way that she was like, uh, people were making fun of her online. She's like, "Well, my account's actually a parody, so you can't make fun of it." It's like, bitch, no, it's not a parody. <laughs> you can't just say shit's a parody yeah. once you start getting made fun of for being called that's grading. Kind of like that's kind of sad because like doing something for so long and like you build a following and then people start making fun of it and you're like well actually I was joking this entire time <laughs> no you weren't yeah you weren't joking at all she should just people enjoy her videos people she should just lean into them even more and Keep I think she it. started to she started doing like the impression of herself as the video yeah but at, at the same time though like I would fall into the class of I hate New York if I was in those circles or like that was the stuff that was coming on to my algorithm like, if I was getting fed that shit all the time, that's yeah. like, you got to try Carbone. Like, if you don't have, like, the fucking burrata, it's like, I don't give a fuck. Yeah. I there was one uh, truly don't give a fuck. making fun of her that called uh, Crispy Artichoke a Sicily's take on a blooming onion. <laughs> <laughs> that, Pretty that fucking geek. funny. That truly is the geek. And, uh, yeah, it, it's just a tough It's a tough position to be in. But come, come Sunday, like, my entire TikTok gets flooded with uh, mm-hmm. either people making fun of shit like that or just being like the the dude from New Zealand who's like, here are the parties that I'm going to this weekend. <laughs> <laughs> I like Nobody you. asked, but here's the parties that I'm going to this weekend. I like you. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I shouldn't. I, I'm, I'm out of the loop, bro. I'm out of the loop. You're I not feel. on NYC talk. Yeah, yeah, you're not. I'm not on TikTok, period. Really? I haven't been on. I got suspended. Gone. Really, we're suspended from like every platform. Mm-hmm. Where do you platforms? They're trying to they're trying to silence us. Well, they can't take edginess. Uh, well, it's okay. The, actually, the liberal media. I clicked on the notifications and uh, I hadn't even seen this in a like I I hadn't seen older videos of mine that have they've deplatformed. But like, there's been like a half dozen battle rap videos that are taken down for bullying. So weird. It's like, dude, they're trying to make it an app where. I we agreed think, that we could bully each other. Yeah. We both signed the contract where we're going <laughs> to yeah. get paid to bully each other. Yeah. I think it's just like they're trying to make it like a perfect, like, only hot dancers are on the app. That's their goal for TikTok. It's only 16-year-old dancers. Yeah. So, like, the fucking... Uh, the D'Amelios. Or whatever Chinese pedophiles are fucking... Uh, running it. Yeah. Or did it get... No. No, I think China still owns it. Okay. Or a Chinese company. Obviously not China. But probably China. But if, realistically speaking, China. We're yeah. going to call a spade a spade. <laughs> Probably China, which is just a shell corporation for North Korea. We all know that, though. So what are you going to Philly for? Um, there's a VIP gambling oh, okay. gambling type of situation. What kind of have to schmooze the VIPs, wine and dine them? You want to hear a little inside info? The uh, pen guys said Roan's the best schmoozer at the company. I know, I heard. Is that true? They love you over at Penn. I am the best schmoozer at the company. We went over to we went we went and had dinner with Westy, and he was like, "Roan is just the best." He's like, <laughs> it's oh, actually God. true. He's like, "God, I fucking love Roan." I believe it. He said it was a master class at Vesper. I I mean Vesper, I put on a master class, and then at the upfronts, I was talking to a dude he didn't even know what barstool was. He was like, the guy said, and I quote, 
your aura is incredible. And I had to back it off. I was like, dude, I'm being way too charming. If some fucking, he was a Bitcoin guy and he's mm-hmm. just like, your aura is fucking incredible. I was like, this guy's going to, this guy's going to suck me off. And that was the last thing I wanted. Your aura is mesmerizing. <laughs> It's just an uncomfortable thing to say to somebody. Yeah, it is yeah. very weird. That they, that they have an aura. You should have been like, yo, check yourself, bro. <laughs> I'm not like that. Roan. <laughs> yeah, you should have started rap battling him right there. I should have busted out your scone bar. Yeah. Aura. Flora. <laughs> Pora. Aurora. Scora. Aurora. Dora. The Explorer. Dora. Ooh. The Explorer. <laughs> They don't and then know. They just ended it there. <laughs> then he would have been like, "Your aura repulses me." <laughs> no, he would have gone fucking nuts for it. He's so like, "I love the I liked Sanders. your aura, and now I hate it. Now it sucks." Great way to ruin an aura in ten seconds. Uh, that sucks. But when things suck, uh, check out BetterHelp. Maybe. Oh, bro. I fuck You're with BetterHelp. Really just hammering these on us, huh? I got We're it. Running out of time. Luckily, I got in BetterHelp. Luckily, BetterHelp is one that I love, and they're friends of the podcast. I got in BetterHelp, and uh, they're very helpful. My dad uses BetterHelp. Actually, I just got uh-huh. a. I got a five o'clock tomorrow. <laughs> I the got a five o'clock tomorrow. The best way to BetterHelp. think about therapy is through a bunch of analogies. Are we supposed to read that? Doesn't seem like something we were supposed to read. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers you video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist, so you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. You should just have said what the analogies were. Bro, it's called I'm doing a, it's called I'm doing a shtick. Lighten up. <laughs> you get your car tuned up so you don't have bigger issues down the road. You get annual checkups at the doctor to so make sure going, you're... F- oh, we're going back to the analogies now. Well, you just said analogies, <laughs> and people don't even know what the fuck analogies you're talking about. You're confusing our fucking fragile listeners right now. They are fragile. Well, that's, I mean, there's no no shame in asking for a little bit of help. There's lots of things that whether you're feeling overwhelmed at work, whether it's relationship stuff, this is me going off the script, whether it's stuff that you have going in from your life, unprocessed psychological damage that's been inflicted on you that you, you feel like maybe it's time to stop inflicting on everybody else in your life and you can kind of just process yourself so you don't repeat the, the problems of your ancestors. Shit like that. That's what better help is going to help you out with. That's facts. That's facts. Uh, it's much more affordable than in-person therapy and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Why invest in everything else and not your mind? That's a fact. I, asked, I leave you with that question today, Roan. <laughs> <laughs> Why invest in everything else and not your mind? Bro, you should fucking teach a college course, bro. This podcast is sponsored by BetterHelp and Son of a Boy Dad listeners. Get 10% off their first month at betterhelp.com slash son. That is B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash son. Son, go help yourself. Go help yourself. Why not help yourself? Why invest As in you everything? listen to this podcast, I want you to pause it. No, don't pause it. Actually, follow along. This is a guided. This is guided meditation. Pause everything else except for the podcast. Pause your day. If pause your day. Sit down. Take a moment for yourself and ask yourself, why everything else? Why? But not your mind. Why not take care of the most valuable resource that you have in this world? You only get one mind. You get two biceps. You do. You get. You do. T- two triceps. Two traps. Two pecs, two feet, two hands, two eyes, two two nostrils, but one mind. Only one mind. So I ask you again, (laughs) why? Rowan, finish me off. I forget what it is. (laughs) Why not help your mind? Your mind's not like your gallbladder. It's not like your spleen. It's not like your appendix. You can't fucking remove it and just keep on moving. No. You got to take care of it. Nurture your mind. Take care of your mind. You want your mind to blossom into something bigger. Fire your synapses. Jog your mind. Clean out the cobwebs. Take care of yourself. Better help. They've got the better help. Betterhelp.com slash sun. Over at better help. We're also going to Nashville. Nashville. Really? We got to start taking Owen on the trips. The boys are going to Nashville and it's going to get rowdy. Yeah, we're gonna go. We're, we're are gonna, you going for the full weekend? I'm gonna go uh, try and yeah get some shit done for the full weekend. You're where are you going to Chicago afterwards? I might. Yeah. Uh, what do you plan? What do you have planned for the weekend? A uh, little little content while I'm down there. We're gonna go on busting with the boys. Shout out to uh, Will Comp. Uh, Shout out Willie C. I already went on the podcast uh, on my own, and I guess that wasn't enough. So now we have to go back with Sass there. 
Well, because Roan's my legal chaperone, and they they can't <laughs> they can't have me down there alone. So we should have a Ghost of Christmas Past episode uh, where it's like you go on like a trip and like get to see your life if you hadn't got to go on all these road trips, <laughs> and we're just like standing outside of your apartment window, and you're just like uh, lying in a pool of your own cum on your crusted up sheets, yeah. and you haven't left for my better help appointment is in ten minutes. <laughs> <laughs> But you keep on skipping your better help appointments yeah. because you haven't you haven't taken care of yourself at all because I we haven't got you a, out of New York. We should make an ad for better help. Go to Christmas past if they never signed up for better help. That's fire. It would be pretty quick, of course. Because <laughs> quick quick ads quick ads perform better. Yeah. Do uh, you two have a few sketches in the works? We got some sketch com. Yeah, I don't know when we're gonna film those though. But we wrote some shit down. How would you say writing went? How would you say that that little writing session we did went? Oh, it was good. Yeah. I thought it was fruitful. It was fun. Better than your one with Tim Dillon? Wouldn't say better. So worse. Well, it was more successful. Yeah, it was successful, but also me and Rome work very well together, I think. I think me and my boy Timmy do, too. <laughs> I think you guys just need to work on uh, getting more reps in in the gym. Yeah. Also, I have... Uh, whenever I come to writing something, I want to... I probably I shouldn't sit like this. I'm no. get blocked out of the... It looks dope. The field of view. It was comfortable for a second, but continue. I like to bring five ideas whenever I go and writing something. Yeah. Even if they're shitty ass ideas. That's smart. That's smart. I just like to get the ball rolling. I think a lot of our listeners could benefit from that. <laughs> Not just in comedy, but in life. Just bring in five ideas and uh, come into them without judgment. Bring five ideas into everything that you do in your daily life. Yeah. Dinner you... time, five ideas for discussion. <laughs> I've heard of people that do that. They like plan out what they're going to say at a dinner party, shit they're going to talk about. This is becoming a very motivational podcast. Mm -hmm. I hope so. I fucking hope we could whip somebody yeah. into shape. And I, and I ask you this question. I leave <laughs> you with this. <laughs> Why not you? Thank you. <laughs> That's it. A short ass TED talk. Yeah. You should be like a Jimmy V seconds. day. Like a, this podcast, you should laugh, cry, and yeah, whatever exactly. the third is. Exactly. We want to work through it, all of you our You should be emotions. moved to orgasm. Oh, yes. One time a day. At least I, once. I pray to be moved to orgasm. Without and not a sexual orgasm either. <clears throat> exactly. Mm -hmm. I ask you this, and now I ask you this. Why does an orgasm strictly have to be sexual? Why must we come with lust attached to it? An evil emotion attached to something so pure is coming. Why can't we leave lust aside? And Why just can't an orgasm be finishing your chores for the day? <laughs> Opening the door for someone. Helping a stranger. Helping a orgasm. stranger. Orgasm. Orgasm. <laughs> I ask you this. I ask you this. Helping an old lady across the street. Why can't that be our orgasm for the day? Why must an orgasm be so sexual? Vigilante justice. Catching a landlord who's been thieving. Why can't that be the thing that makes us come at the end of the day? The Bible states, thou shall not steal from thy neighbor. You went from TED Talk to homily. <laughs> <laughs> but my landlord steals from me. Explain this. I asked my landlord why. Why me? Bro, I, wa I went to the movie about uh, Tammy Faye Baker. Do you know who Tammy Faye Baker is? No. She was a, an evangelist. She was like a televangelist who like made a fucking nut in the 90s. She made a fucking ton of money. And there was just a bunch of televangelists. She was one of the first people. And she had 20 million listeners a day. And they Jesus would have Christ. full broadcasts of fucking 20 million people that they would just be talking to on their network about God. And they were just selling God and just being like, and I need you to double your... Uh, Double your pledge this month and just spend twice Dude, as that much. That happens at just normal church. It's crazy. Yeah, they're like there's there, it'll be like a 15 minute advertising session. Mm -hmm. I would I could be friends with a murderer before I could be friends with like a priest who is asking it for people to do that kind I'm of actually, shit. Actually, uh, right now I'm watching this show called Midnight Mass. You ever seen like a Haunting of Hill House? Uh -huh. Or like a I think it's like the Haunting of Bly Manor or something like that. There's two. It's no. by the same people. It's a good show. It's really good. I'm like halfway through it. Dope. And uh, it's a, what is it about mass? It's about like a priest. And are they just asking for cash the entire time? No, it's like a horror type thing. So he's just like uh, a pedophile? Not quite. <laughs> but I'm not saying he isn't either. Yeah, you don't even have to make priests scary because like they're inherently fucking terrifying. That is facts. <laughs> they're just I, I see no cap there.
But so part of me sometimes wishes that I had that part of my brain turned off where uh, I could just like be like, yeah, I'm going to pretend to be like super into God so I can ask people for money because they'll be easily tricked by thinking that they're going to go to heaven eventually if they just give me enough <laughs> cash. <laughs> I wish that I could just fucking, uh, but I'm just too good of a fucking guy. Yeah, you are. I'm just way too you really are. decent of a human being. It's hard working with someone that's so good. And humble. That's so talented. And humble. And just a genuinely good person. And also humble. May may we may we all be as humble as me someday. It makes me question why, why me? <laughs> why does Roan choose to sit in the chair next to me? <laughs> what have I done to deserve this? I'm filmed with overwhelming gratitude, <laughs> but at the same time, fear <laughs> that it'll all end one day, rapidly. <laughs> well, let me teach you something. Fear is a more a more potent experience than love, and uh, it could all end today. Damn, if, you're spitting, bro. If that bird <laughs> if that bird goes down, if I hop on that helicopter with uh, the boss man and the other boss it man, better not, bro. You gonna get off a uh, Ari Shafir tweet if it does? Oh yeah, I'll be like, Rome was kind of a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Rowan Dave, Rowan Dave, and Big Cat, not good guys. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm not too upset that this happened. <laughs> Will I be going to the club tonight? Yeah. Yeah. I probably will. Dibs on his desk. <laughs> Dibs on Dave's office. Yeah, I wonder if Dave has any kind of will that you could like slide into. I'll try and have him like uh Probably. Create. What age do you have to be there when you start writing a will? What time do you have to be there, by the way? Six. I gotta be at the helipad at six. Oh, oh okay, so you're good. Well, helipad's not in the building, brother. We nah, gotta, we'll, we'll get it here. I said I was like, do I am I gonna leave from a fucking roof? I feel like that that'll be the scariest part. That going up be. to a yeah. roof and then just like taking off. I'd rather take off from ground level. Mm. I don't want to take off from a roof. It's gonna be funny because doesn't Dave ride helicopters like all the time? Maybe he's gonna be shitting on you. Let me know if he says anything about me. By the way, uh, we're definitely gonna talk about. I'm gonna bring up numbies yeah. when I get there. Yeah, I'd love to know. <laughs> Facetime me if you if you have to. Think we're gonna get fucking reception from inside the the bird, dude. Birds have the best reception. The chopper? Up in the clouds. Uh, uh, yeah, I'll let you know. Um, How far in are we? Hour 21. Oh. Let's get the fuck oh, yeah, out of good. here. <laughs> I thought we were at like 50 <laughs> minutes. Let's get the uh, fuck out of here. All right, thank you for listening. And before I leave, I ask you this. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you choose to listen but not subscribe. <laughs> Thank you. Be kind to yourself. And be kind to yourself today. And each other. And each other. <laughs> <laughs>